My Hair is a Garden, Words and Pictures by Cosby A. Cabrera. I was always drawn to Miss Tilly's house. She lived four houses down and across the street from our house. There was something special about Miss Tilly, the way she found a use for everything and made up songs while scrubbing her porch, the way her house shone in the daylight with its vines curling around it. It took my breath away. You could say her house had a glory. I used to run right into her house when I was a toddler. So when I was teased because of my hair again, it was no surprise that I found myself running right to Miss Tilly's after school. She led me to her kitchen table where she'd been straining sorrow. Its pungent aroma and the smell of steeping ginger filled the air, the kitchen. When my tears came, a slow leak, a salty leak, she handed me a tissue and let me be for a few minutes. Miss Tilly knew I, if I was looking for comfort, I could go to Mama for that. She knew I was at her house for a reason. She set a cup of sorrel in front of me, and I took a sip. It went down smooth and tangy and broke the lump in my throat. I, I, I need help with my hair, I said. It wasn't the first time my hair had been made a joke. I sort of got used to it. I'd shrug it off, or I'd keep my hat on, even when I wasn't supposed to wear it in class. But when Julio Rutchards who I had known since kindergarten, said, we all know Mac's hair is always a mess. He said it like it was a fact, like we all knew the Statue of Liberty is surrounded by water, or we all knew George Washington was the first president of the United States. Folks have been poking fun of my hair since I was little, I told Miss Tilly. Mama's tried to fix it, but truth is, she doesn't know what to do with it. I could feel Miss Tilly's head on my thick nest of head of a head. That touch gave me a hope. I made a little song in my head. Miss Tilly's hair is shiny. Miss Tilly's hair is long. She wears it as a crown, like beauty wrapped in a song. You know, Miss Tilly's hair is a glory. Miss Tilly called my mama, who said I could stay for a, there for a while. Then Miss Tilly turned to me. Now I'll show you how to shampoo, she said. Shampoo? I know my hair is a mess. But it's not dirty, I thought. Miss Tilly put a towel around my neck and led me to the sink. Normally, I would part your hair in the quarters before shampooing, but it's a bit tangled and matted now, so it's best to shampoo first. We'll detangle it when it's more pliable. For that, you'll need a wide tooth comb. I already use a wide tooth comb, I said. Well, when I use a comb, that is. Miss Tilly took out a large comb with teeth that looked like I'd it as far apart as spaces in the garden rake. I nodded. Oh, right. I said, a wide tooth comb. We'll use this one for now, said Miss Tilly. Later on, when your hair is trained, you can go back to your usual co comb. Trained? Did Miss Millie mean to, you could train hair? Oh, yes, Miss Tilly replied. You've got to work with what you have, but you can still tell it what to do. Do you think my hair will ever be as long as yours once it's trained? I asked her. Length don't matter, Miss McKenzie. Don't let nobody fool you. It's the health of your hair that counts. Miss Tilly ran the water in the sink. I guess you're right, I said, but I wasn't convinced. Would my hair always be somebody's idea of a joke? Would it ever be beautiful? Miss Tilly turned off the water. Which would you prefer if you had to choose? A healthy, shiny head of cropped hair or hair that's long, straggly, fragile, fragile and full of split ends? Were those my choices? These questions were drowning out the song in my head. Miss Tilly looked at me as if she were reading my thoughts. She slowly pulled the towel from my shoulder and laid it on the kitchen counter by the sink near the drained pot of sorrel. Come with me, she said. She steered me toward the screen door to her garden. Miss Tilly's backyard was a paradise of so many shades of green, bright pockets of colorful flowers and cool shade. I could barely take it in. It was as if someone had taken a big paintbrush and made bold strokes of green, then used countless, countless little brushes to fill in the details. I walked over to the bench and sat down. I inhaled deeply. 
the backyard didn't smell like the rest of the neighborhood. It smelled, well, alive. I wanted to know every part of this garden. I reached down to feel the ground. The earth was damp and cool. It felt like it was giving me something I couldn't see. How did you create this, Miss Tilly? I wanted to know. Thirty or more years ago, I put some seeds in the ground, Miss Tilly said. I planted cutting from neighbors and friends' trees, bought a few plants and bulbs from catalogs. I pointed to the tree Miss Tilly called a, the, a Japanese maple. The big one draped gracefully over, her, over the garden. That tree was a cutting, I asked. Oh, that was a wee thing at first. The phone company men came through the yard one day and trampled over it with their boots. Got in the way where they were sitting to have lunch. I found it plucked up, clean, and woven into the chain link fence. I guess, what did you do? Oh, I cried, Miss Millie replied. Paid $15 for that tree, and there was that was a lot of money for me at the time. But I put that tree right back in the ground and watered it every day without fail. I thought about how that little tree had survived and all the water Miss Tilly gave it every day, even though it just looked like a broken branch. I wonder if she would, if I would have given up and thrown it away. I leaned down and ran my hand over some tiny plants in the ground near the bench. What are these? Those are succulents. They hold a lot of water. Makes a great ground cover. They sure are pretty, I said. Miss Tilly looked at me. Is that Japanese maple prettier than those succulents? She asked. Of course not, I said. Even though that Japanese maple is taller, she asked. They're both beautiful, I said, even though they're so different. As the words came out of my mouth, I knew that I believed it. Ah, she said, go back inside and put your towel back on. That was the day I first learned that my hair is a garden. My hair is a garden and like every good garden, it must be cared for every day. The nutrients in soil can be stimulated and enriched. My body is the soil for my hair. What I give to the soil comes back to me. I love to eat right. My words are like seeds that I plant. What I think and I speak, speak draws a yield. I weed out all opinions that have no place in my garden. Miss Tilly says it's not what you start with in the garden that matters. It's the care, time, and attention you give it. My hair is a garden and I give it love. <laughs>